Carthage, one of the greatest city-states of the ancient Mediterranean, is known to have relied on mercenaries and warfare. There were many reasons for this, the first of which was that the Carthaginians, descendants of the Phoenician colonists, were a minority in their new home. In the future, this situation will change slightly, but the practice of using mercenaries will remain. However, did the Punians not participate in their own wars? Of course they did. Basically, they were detachments from other Phoenician colonies, but the Carthaginians themselves, having citizenship, participated in the war as part of the so-called sacred detachment, not to be confused with the Theban sacred detachment. Being representatives of the oldest Phoenician families, the sacred squad stood out for its expensive equipment and the quality of training. People for this elite guard have been trained since childhood. Most were to become part of the phalanx, and therefore discipline and the ability to fight in the ranks were their element. When the old allies betrayed, and the mercenaries rebelled, it was the sacred squad that was the last bastion of Carthage. Their construction turned out to be much more perfect than the Greek counterparts and was devoid of the shortcomings of the progenitors. Vulnerability from the flanks. When the spear became ineffective, they drew swords, in the skill of using which they also had no equal. However, they were rarely used in war outside of Africa. The high cost, number, usually 2,500 people, but could increase depending on the circumstances, and social status did not allow them to be used in bold maneuvers and made the generals appreciate them as much as the Spartans valued their Spartans. For this reason, as mentioned earlier, the main theater of war for them was Africa, and the main task was the defense of Carthage. However, there were examples of their use in other lands. Very rarely they were used as amphibious assault. Carthage is still a maritime power, and therefore the coast is the most familiar battlefield. But, again, any decision to use the sacred band could turn into a disaster, making Carthage completely defenseless for the attack of the African satellites, the threat of which has always been. But why is this formation called sacred? Unlike the Thebans, who deified each other, the Carthaginians really dedicated themselves to a deity the supreme god Hale. They swore to him to defend Carthage to the last breath. And it is more than words, it is the definition of the meaning of life. In Carthage, oaths were valued more than anywhere else. An example here is Hannibal, who also took an oath, to devote his whole life to one thing, the war with Rome. And indeed, he sacrificed all of himself to this and forced him to do what people before him considered impossible. What can be said in the end, the sacred detachment of Carthage is an example of the brotherhood of ideal warriors. They were perfect in everything and wielded a sword, a spear, a dart, a pike. They were equally useful, both on foot and on horseback, being an excellent shock cavalry, whose onslaught no one can resist. Meanwhile, on ships, as part of assault and landing detachments, they were extremely useful and effective. However, they had the weakness of all such formations, they were overly proud, which often led to their death. In addition, they literally represented the upper class and were the state elite whose loss has acute consequences within the state. And of course, a smart enemy, in the first place, attacks them. The loss of skilled fighters seriously affects the psychological state of all soldiers. It was good to recognize them. Thanks to their expensive clothes, they wore purple, and equipment, it was not difficult for either friend or foe. 